I know one day I would do it real big. All right. Well, Chase and John, thank you both for joining us today. Um, also, shout out to Jace Henderson, one of my good friends, for connecting us. Um, I'm just really excited about this conversation and really want to learn more about the amazing things that you're doing. Um, but Chase, can we start with you in terms of, you know, your background? I know you've had a career in uh, sales that aligns really well with what you're doing right now, but could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again so much for the opportunity here today. We're really looking forward to talking with you. And yeah, shout out to Jace, a good friend of mine as well. Overland Park, let's go, baby. Wink, wink. Anyway, so uh, yeah, my background, I graduated at CU Boulder, their business school in 2014, got into at and their business sales leadership development program, learned a lot about the cloud, mobile applications, how they're developed, and then ended up working for Comcast Business, Ring Central, had my own side hustle as a reseller and now i am the founder with my father john preve here uh co-founder as well and my coo of hi there solutions we're an exciting mobile app for the deaf hard of hearing we launched monday in both the google play and apple app store and it's just been an incredible two and a half years to get to where we're at anything you want to add dan no that <clears throat> chase just has a real terrific background that that was a good, great springboard in order to be in this uh, social networking telecommunications uh space uh from the technical perspective that's awesome john what about you you know i can imagine your executive leadership experiences definitely helped as the ceo of high there solutions but um could you talk a little bit about your background a little bit you bet so uh, Robert, uh, I've had a, over 30 years of work experience in the biopharmaceutical industry, uh, both at headquarters and field-based positions uh, in line management, and not only with startup companies, which was a critical f importance for high their solutions, mm -hmm. but also with you know big pharma, big biotech uh, companies as well. Whereupon over that uh, the span of that career. I've been involved in the launch of dozens of new pharmaceutical uh, medications, very, very important medications. And with that experience, uh, I've just had a, a terrific um, uh, involvement, if you will, and learned a lot relative to how do you launch a new product, specifically when you're a startup company mm -hmm. and you may not have uh, all the resources of a large biopharma company uh, in order to really uh, uh, properly launch a, a product with a lot of sales force behind you. So our, that experience has helped relative to a more non-personal promotion uh, strategy and tactics, as well as uh, the implementation of social media, including podcasts like this, to help us with regard to our, our new product launch. It's exciting, man. That's incredible. I mean, you know, I, I really want to talk a lot about Hi There Solutions today, um, but could you talk a little bit about why you're so passionate about um, the solution you're providing with Hi There Solutions and um, how it aligns with the work that you're doing? I'll take you, the first part and you take the second I'll take the second part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So nice. my grandparents on my father's side, so Chase's great-grandparents, Walter and Anna Preeb, were both deaf and they attended the Wisconsin School for the Deaf. Now, on my mother's side, my grandparents or Chase's great grandparents, both severe hard of hearing, but in, in their later years, of course, right? And, and hearing degenerates over time. Uh, myself personally, I too have a severe hearing loss and I'm a bilateral hearing aid user. But that is um, the Walter and Anna Preet story, both being deaf and attending the Wisconsin School for the Deaf. And go Firebirds, by the way. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, they, provide, uh, they provided us basically with that, that why, the, the mission, the why behind Hi There Solutions, uh, with Chase being able to bring in his technology background, at mobile apps, cloud, et cetera, you know, he just realized there was a gap essentially for uh, the deaf and hard of hearing, not only in the United States, but globally, uh, specific to being a very underserved population around technology as compared to their hearing peers or hearing mm -hmm. individuals. So that's, that's kind of the longer history and the longer why of of our company, but Chase has, uh, he can share a story that 
uh, basically is the impetus, and it's quite interesting, of the high there uh, solution. Yeah, absolutely. Like my dad that's said, awesome. that's a longer term family history. My uh, great grandmother, Grandma Willie, um, also wore hearing aids as well. She had hearing loss. Big Cubs fan. She's got a breakout at Wrigley, which is really cool. They give her a ceremony, <laughs> which is really nice. And I had a friend back in 2019, still a friend now, and an early advisor to either solutions. She had a profound hearing loss. She wore, she was actually the first cochlear implant recipient west of the Mississippi River. And her story was very interesting. She was born hearing, but at the age of four, she contracted a lung infection and she got overprescribed antibiotics, which killed the hair cells in her ears. So she became a cochlear implant recipient. And one time when she was down in Mexico, she was trying to FaceTime me. However, her internet reception, cellular reception, both were just horrible and it kept freezing. Now, what was interesting to note is she reads lips. So I, I just couldn't pick up the phone and call her. She preferred texting and FaceTime. Well, on FaceTime, it froze up. You got the screen of death that says, hey, poor internet connection. So she couldn't read my lips, couldn't understand. What's interesting to note is if you're a lip reader like her, you only pick up about 30% of what's being said. The other 70% you have to fill in contextually. So it was very aggravating for her. So we hung up, she was super upset. And I just told my dad, hey, what if, what if FaceTime had closed captions? And it just springboarded mm. from there, you know, and it's, it's, been, it's been really great. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so you kind of you described that situation, which is incredible um, in terms of the fact that you decided to create your own solution for this problem. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a, another way that you described it as well in terms of you know when a person that um, you know is have, having challenges with hearing is in Starbucks and they're trying to just yeah. order a cup of coffee. Could you talk a little bit about that? Sure thing. So did you want to take this or do you want oh, me to? No, go ahead. Okay, so that yeah. solution came about from again my friend. She had a boyfriend at the time, and he was also profoundly hard of hearing, you know, deaf as well, but he did not have cochlear implants or hearing aids. Uh, he primarily signed, and his accent, unfortunately, was very, very thick. So they were at a Jamba Juice one day, and as you can imagine, it's noisy with all the blenders going, trying to make your smoothie, right? And right. we were thinking about that situation. How could we improve, you know, say the ordering experience? And so we came up with Just Talk, which is a two-way text-to-speech, speech-to-text chat board with animated American Sign Language sticker emojis. And as you can imagine these days with COVID and plexiglass, I can't read your lips, makes it very difficult for a deaf or hard of hearing individual, you know, to say use a drive through or order something, you know. And right now, currently, they're just passing a piece of paper back and forth. Just Talk is great for both, you know, noisy uh, public places, you know, a doctor's office, we have a telehealth solution. Where do you want to paint in around there? So, uh, Robert, <clears throat> this, this solution called Just Talk, as Chase described, the text chat board. I mean, essentially, we are, we are replacing note passing back and forth or individuals having to maybe type a note on their, on their cell phone, smartphone, mm -hmm. and then just hold it up and show it to another individual who may grab it and take it and have to type a note back. Uh, one of our early advisors, Amber Galloway, oh, yeah. when we described the Just Talk solution, which is this real-time uh, two-way live conversation that's transcribed, and then there's messages, messaging uh, back and forth that can also occur within that solution, as well as animated American Sign Language sticker emojis. Simple things like hello and... Uh, uh, I, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. So yes. much. Yes and no. And we, we, we put some, some great ones in there. Also, please, things like this, which help that communication experience. And not only, not only is it important for a, a noisy environment, but Chase also alluded to like a doctor's office. We heard too, as we followed the life journey of the deaf and hard of hearing, uh, and as well as we talked to, to vet service vendors, bankers, pharmacists, physicians, uh, at, a ho at a hotel or airline check-in experience at the counter, that a solution that provided a real-time 
uh, text to speech, speech to text, uh, chat board mm -hmm. for deaf and hard of hearing individuals would really enhance that communication process and be less frustrating in both noisy and quiet places. So just terrific. And one of our advisors, he's, sorry, go ahead, Robert. I have one more anecdote, unless you had some. Oh, please do. Yeah, one of our advisors, Tyson Gillies, um, mm -hmm. he's been in the MLB for 13 years, great guy, two-time Pan, uh, Pan American Olympian in both gold, silver medalist, uh, incredible guy. He's become one of our advisors and close friends. He told us when he was trying out just like that, oh my gosh, you're telling me my friends and family can now learn how to sign? And that's our long-term view. It's not just a short-term, long-term, you know, we're all about inclusivity, accessibility. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that was pretty powerful what he told us, you know, oh my gosh, my friends can now learn sign language. My family can, because what we learned is with, you know, deaf children, deaf teens, deaf, hard of hearing adults, their parents or family, typically they don't learn sign language. Well, now they have a reason to, mm -hmm. in a way to. Right. In a, in a, in, in an easy way, right? Yeah. All of them went through emojis as well. Yeah. Hey, Robert, one other quick anecdote. Let me go back to hi there for a <laughs> second. Chase mentioned, you know, it's basically FaceTime, but it's FaceTime on steroids, right? It has speech to text. It has instant messaging, uh, in a, and it has these uh, animated ASL sticker emojis all within a video call. And as we have brought on our team, advisors and consultants who are deaf or profoundly hard of hearing, we, we've shown them our tech, our tech. We've shown that we've had several in our beta testing process. And here's the reactions of, of, of these deaf individuals. They see this, these solutions, they're in beta testing. The reactions are so heartfelt, they're so mm -hmm. emotional. Uh, we had one individual, Justin Osmond, as an example, as he saw the solution for Hi There, uh, the video chat uh, product, he, he got very emotional. Mm -hmm. And his comment- In a good way. In a good way. His comment was, my goodness, this can really change the lives. It's life-changing for deaf and hard of hearing individuals because you're connecting them back to life. And Chase likes to, to refer to a Helen Keller quote, mm -hmm. you know, where blindness separates people from things, but deafness separates people from people. And uh, like Chase mentioned, the accessibility inclusiveness of our first two initial solutions are, tr again, our mission is to accomplish just that, connect people. Yep, innovate to solve a problem, just mm -hmm. execute. You gotta have great, you gotta get scrappy, you gotta have to sidelines and solve it. That is amazing. I mean, there, you, there's so much to unpack there. Um, and I think, you know, in terms of the people that are listening right now or watching, um, I know that you have Hi There Solutions and also uh, Just Talk. Um, could you talk a little bit about the difference between those? Because I know both of those things can serve, you know, the same community, but could you talk about those solutions? Yeah, I'll pitch this over to you. You bet. Yeah. So for, for your audience that are listening or that are watching. Uh, watching, for example, Hi There is a video chat product. So think about FaceTime or a WhatsApp video call. Now, those two solutions do not have real-time captioning where you can separate and distinguish between the speakers. You know, person A, per Chase, John, you know, who's speaking and what are they saying? Uh, and as well, they don't have things like uh, instant messaging right within the call, or as we mentioned, these full access, of course, to all the emojis that one would want on a keyboard if you were sending a text message, for example. But then we also included these animated um, ASL sticker emojis. So think of hi there as a video <clears throat> chat call, a video call, FaceTime call on steroids. It's a terrific, terrific solution. And we don't cover your face up with the captions. It always stays below. So if you're a lip reader, even if you're sending up a SMS message within the video call, we never <clears throat> cut the video feeds. You can always read the lips and we don't cover it up with, you know, Star Wars style cl closed captioning. That's correct. <laughs> so uh, terrific, terrific solution there. On the, on the other hand, uh, again, following the life journey of the deaf and hard of hearing, Chase had mentioned his friend with the, with the Starbucks Jamba Juice uh, uh, scenario. So for your audience, think about 
on your smartphone a solution that's that's within our app called Just Talk that provides for a real time two way live conversation between two individuals and it's captioned in in real time and as well there's messaging uh, instant messaging that can occur within that conversation and mm -hmm. as well the sticker emojis for signing at the end of the conversation and same with our hi there video calls we do not store those right. conversations our our tech is encrypted from end to end and everything is deleted at the end of those conversations for privacy purposes right. amazing um that's awesome. And I know that kind of there's kind of a B2C model and a B2B model too. So I feel like that you're, you're base, basically covering a lot of bases there. Um, and so I know that you won in a, an innovation award um, from a very prestigious organization in a really competitive space where you have people that are have been doing this for you know decades. Um, could you talk a little bit about like the serendipity of that moment and how you um, won that award? Sure thing. I'll, I'll start off and dad, feel free to, you know, mm -hmm. fill in around. Uh, last year, my dad submitted a, an, an award application, you know, our wireframes of the app. We weren't even in beta yet. We were just the wireframes, so like clickable prototype, if you will, to hearing mm -hmm. health and technology matters, which is a very prestigious, you know, organization mm -hmm. for audiologists, uh, speech language pathologists, hearing instrument specialists, what have you. And he submitted it in the mobile, uh, what was the specific, at mobile app and technology. And captioning. And captioning category. Yeah. We didn't promote it. We didn't, uh, you know, do, we That's didn't awesome. tell our network about it. We just submitted the award, well, my dad did. And a couple months later, we got an email notification saying, hey, you won Innovator of the Year Award for this particular segment of the six different, you know, award categories it was super cool we beat out established you know companies that have been doing this for decades like you mentioned i won't say their names because i don't want to promote them but and it was really really great to you know get that award and promote it it's on our website what else would you like to add about it Dad? it was super cool yeah oh my gosh robert so it's called the innovator award you know you, you they, we we were able to to write a press release, mm -hmm. you know, link in Chase's comments about the award, the from the president of the organization as well, mm -hmm. his comments, link to the video of the award ceremony, uh, which was done virtually, of course. Uh, but from that and from the press releases, we were able to send out, and just from within that organization of Hearing Health and Technology Matters, which is a global organization, and 22,000 audiologists mm -hmm. voted on the various different categories. So it's global. But from that press release, from that award, again, while we were still in beta testing, we didn't even have a final product, as you heard until this past Monday, right, uh, when we released it in the app and play stores. But from that, that has led to so many other global organizations who have contacted us uh, in either requesting either digital or print uh, interviews or tech reviews. Uh, we've got organizations that want to contact, like yourself, mm -hmm. a, a podcast. We've participated <laughs> in one already, which has a large speech language pathologist following. Uh, and uh, we've got a couple of TV media outlets that have contacted us. Yeah. De Deaf Welcome TV out of Chicago. And then the biggie, CNBC, has also reached out. They'd like to do a six-minute segment with Chase in their tech tech review or their tech spotlight uh, segment that they have uh, in the morning. So uh, great things to come. It's, it's really springboarded us into some, just some terrific opportunities to help support the launch uh, of the Hi There app. That's amazing. Hey, thank you. Ch uh, Chase and John. So, I mean, it sounds like you've hit an incredible stride in your business, one in which a lot of people don't necessarily get an opportunity to get there often. Um, what's your plan for growth this year? And also, are you going to let investors in on this deal? Yes, and yes. So we do plan on growing, you know? Okay. And uh, we got, <laughs> you know, we're, we're launching in 10 languages. We have several others we're going to be launching in this year. We've got many future innovations, I think, couple of which we're going to be launching this year in telehealth, 
corporate solutions, education. Um, eventually, you know, yeah, we're, we're excited. <clears throat> you can't just, you know, be stagnant. You always got to innovate, innovate, innovate. That's my mantra since day one. And I know I'm always the crap out of my dad. <laughs> uh, I tell him that every day, be creative, think outside the box, you know, and um, we, we do have the opportunity. I'll let my father speak to this about, you know, allowing investors in and what our strategy is there. We've been bootstrapping so far, you know, I've cleaned out my 401k savings, mm -hmm. checking, max out credit cards, and uh, yeah, I'll have my dad touch more on that. So yeah, Chase mentioned that, yes, we, we launched with two innovations inside the app, but Robert, what's cool is that we build our platform. It really, we've had deaf and hard of hearing folks call it a communication hub, where within the app, you basically can scroll, what solution do you wanna use at this particular point in time? Uh, do you need a solution that's in the educational vertical? like? pronounce it, which helps uh, with the pronunciation of certain words that we know the deaf and hard of hearing have a difficult time pronouncing, for example. Uh, do you need the just talk solution because you want to have a conversation that's maybe transactional in a restaurant or a quiet environment, or do you want to make a video call? Or uh, in the future, mm -hmm. you know, do you want to translate one language into another language while you're in a video call or while you're in a two-way conversation? So these are all innovations that we'll build within the app. Some of the corporate solutions, way cool. We'll take Just Talk, and I mentioned, oh gosh, you're at an airline ticket counter, a hotel check-in, a bank, a health system. We'd like to take Just Talk and license it out as a, as a sole standing solution uh, to large corporations where they can improve the customer check-in experience or transactional experience. We think there's a market for that as well. We also see, and I'll, I'll wrap this up before I talk about the investment piece. We also see a large opportunity to, to assist from another accommodation, it's called an accommodation within the classroom, mm -hmm. within the education <clears throat> vertical. And we have a solution called Right Here, which is a one-way speech to text. So think about a teacher wearing a Bluetooth microphone and speaking their lecture and the, the deaf or hard of hearing student, either in the classroom or remotely, either way, mm -hmm. uh, is able to have that lecture, that speech, that lesson uh, transcribed in real time and come right to their tablet or their laptop in the class or outside of the class. And then afterwards, be able to save that file as a PDF to either their device or in the cloud. So we're, that'll be a solution that we'll work on later this year. And uh, we've got a, a couple of beta sites, some schools already lined up to, to assist us with, uh, with, the, with the beta testing in a, in a classroom environment. And you know, think about it, uh, high school is awkward for everybody, myself especially. And if you are a deaf or hard of hearing individual, you either have a big box on your desk or you have someone in the front of the classroom signing for you or a note taker. Well, mm -hmm. hey, that's not very accurate. And furthermore, if a professor, a teacher is giving a lecture, they might have their back to you writing on a whiteboard, right? Well, hey, all that makes you feel awkward and excluded and kind of calls out, you know, what calls you out and nobody really wants that. So just from an emotional perspective, we're just all about inclusivity and accessibility. Dad, you want to talk about the investment piece? I do. So, uh, Robert, we are we constantly are going through a cap raise, mm -hmm. and we're actively involved in one now. Uh, we have had a lot of VC, venture capital companies, or angel funds who who love the tech. They mm -hmm. love the idea. They want us to get launched, which we are now. And they said, "Hey, get your first five hundred thousand downloads." come back to us because we want to see your traction. So we'll go back, but we're also doing a private investor, individual investor, if you will, a type of raise as well. All, all this is for the purpose or the objective of uh, getting an influx of capital within the company, Hyder Solutions, in order to begin our work on some of our future innovations and have a successful launch of our first two solutions, Hyder and Just Talk. Yeah. Wow. 
you both have some busy schedules, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, <laughs> you know, when it comes to working together, I'm sure there you get this question often. But um, what are the benefits of working together as a father son duo? It seems super cool. Yeah, absolutely. No, great question. We do get it a lot. So thank you. <laughs> what I'll, I'll start off and I'll pass it over to you, Dad. So in high, when I was in high school, my dad and I wrote three novels together. We haven't published them. And what's really great is I'm more of the creative guy. He's more of the, hey, I'm going to, you know, operations. I'm the analytical guy. Me, I'm just ideas outside the box kind of a thing. It's been, it's been a great two and a half years between my dad, my mom being terrific um, in terms of social media, coming up with ideas for us to promote and market. It's been, it's been a really fun dynamic. Just, you know, I'm the yin to his yang. I'm the creativity to the analytics. You know, what do you think, Ed? So think about, <clears throat> Robert, think about the company Apple. <clears throat> of course, for the longest time, you had Steve Jobs. Innovate, innovate, innovate. Mm -hmm. None of those things would have come to the market if you did not have the partner, the co-founder, Steve Wozniak, pure operations. So in any great company, we, we think we're going to be a really great company over time. Just give us a little bit uh, to, get, to get launched here. But you've got to have, you have to have individuals, in this case it's Chase, on the innovation side, the solution side. And, and then at the same time, you have to have someone like myself yeah. who's, who can operationalize or get those things, to, those ideas uh, formulated in a clickable prototype through beta testing, through development, and then ultimately launch and, 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 and then execute on your strategy and your tactics in order to see a, a nice commercialization of those same innovative ideas. So it's a nice blend mm -hmm. uh, between the two of us uh, over the last two and a half years in order to get to the point where we are now. Which is launched. Woo! Heck yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> um, so we're going to transition over to yeah. the speed round. And, oh, yeah. you know, I'm excited about this. So quick Let's responses and you can expand upon it if you want. All right. So, OK. Um, snowboarding or fishing? Snowboarding. Skiing for me. <laughs> <laughs> Not an answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, I saw the guitar back there. Elvis or the Beatles? Elvis. Definitely Elvis, but let's let's throw a shout in there for Johnny Cash and the Rolling Stones, Bruce Jones, Bruce Springsteen. I missed them. I, I should have added those. Um, <laughs> Denver Broncos or the L.A. Rams? Green Bay Packers. Okay. I got a cheese head behind my guitar. Hey man, I grew up in Wisconsin. I'm a cheese head. So so is Tracy, my wife. So Chase, by default, we're cheese heads. We're Packers fans amazing um all right nikola tesla or thomas edison nikola tesla nice nice all right that wraps up the speed round just to see you know where your heads are at um yeah. and so we'll kind of wrap it up with kind of a the theme of the legendary uh the living legends uh series you know which is you know you're a living legend because you execute on a consistent basis so jason uh, i'm sorry chase and john um you know if there was one thing that you would urge people listening or watching to do um immediately what would that thing be for me it would be just execute get off the sideline be scrappy have grit just try. If you fail, big whoop. Who cares? Just go do. If you have an idea, yeah. just be innovative. You know, innovate to solve a problem. That's mine. So a lot. <clears throat> I have two things. So along that line, innovate. Right. <clears throat> the uh, the CEO of a company called Twilio. Yeah. He has a he has a famous quote uh, that basically is this: Great apps are built, not bought. And we learned that in the early days that, yes, there's existing technology and APIs and cloud services, et cetera, that, uh, that are available and out there. But being able to pull all those pieces together and, and, and with the components of a smartphone, right, uh, that to, an app had to be built specifically. Uh, uh, the Hyder app had to be yeah. built, the Just Talk app. Our future mm. innovations, they all have to be built. They, you just don't grab them off the shelf and be able to put them into your, into your communication hub or your platform like, like we have. So 
just around that, it's all about innovate, 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 like Chase says. Here's the second thing, and I have to grab something yeah, off the grab wall. It. Definitely grab it. Yeah, nice. I think we showed this to you, but <clears throat> this is something we have posted above uh, our computer every day. So it. it's going to be a drawing, uh, a, an image, if you will, and I, I'll hold I hold it up to the camera, and I hope it comes through, uh, you know, nicely. But Robert, what we'd like to pass on to your audience uh, as as a startup company, in a, entrepreneurs is that many people look at, oh, I've got this idea and then it's just gonna go from A to B and it's gonna get to the market. And that's gonna be a straight line of start to finish and success. That's not what success looks like. Now I'm gonna hold this piece of paper up and I hope it comes through. There we go. That's what real success yeah. looks like. Exactly. Success is a squiggly line. It moves all over the place. It's roaming, rambling. There's ups and downs. And as entrepreneurs, our advice, as, as and we have had a, a number of podcasts and also lectures at M, with MBA students, undergrads, mm -hmm. et cetera, we always encourage them. My goodness, you're going to hit bumps in the road. You're going to have obstacles, challenges, and you just have to work them through and problem solve because success is a squiggly line to get to the end point. So that would be our, our piece of advice for sure. Like Kobe Bryant said, you have to have a winner's mentality. Winners win, losers lose. So just go do it. Amazing, Chase and John. That is awesome. You. Um, you know, really appreciate you for joining me on the Living Legends series today. Um, and I just hope you both have a really good day. This was awesome. Thank you. Uh, this was great, man. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Shout out to Jace. And uh, yeah, looking forward to connecting with you again, Robert. Thank you. All right. All right. Real big. I know one day I would do it real big.